What's going on, my friends? Welcome to episode 64 of the Get a Game on Podcast. For you, the hottest takes, the latest stories, and spicy picks showing New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, national, and international sports. Hosted by your Shuli Adam Grisani, Joyce Sarah by Michael Cunningham, Alex Reach, and Marcel Smurda. Go listen to the podcast right now on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. Also, you show up on Twitter at GetAGameOnP. And I thought it said, it's time to get your game on. What's good? What's good, Alex? What's good, I'm Michael? Good. What's good, Marcellus? Yo, what's up? I'm, do- I'm doing good. Um, How's your New Year so far? It's good, man. Everything's good. How about yours? M- mine's been... um. Hey, hey, no, no. I mean, we got um a bunch of snow here, and um, we we got a bunch of snow around uh, my area. So yeah, I heard, I heard about that. Yeah, Michael, does the about? snow get you hard? Not really. I got like four inches of snow. You know, yeah, I we got we got four day. inches. I, I I ain't really have much. Like, like, it, it, like here, here's the thing. Like, um, I like um I I did like all all the shoveling like by myself. There you go, Adam. You became a man today. Good job. Exactly. I've been shoveling by myself since I was twelve years old. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my, yeah, my folks woke me up at like um, what, what was it like, t- like uh, woke me up and like you gotta get down and, do- and shovel. I'm like you can't shower, you can't do anything, you can't have breakfast. Just go down like th- go down and shovel. I'm like okay, like I got myself up and you know what. This is what you do during the winter time. This is what you do during the winter time. Definitely. Yeah, but I kind of wish, like, um, I wish it kind of like snowed like um a little bit more before Christmas, though. I feel, I feel like, I feel like nowadays, like nowadays, like as of late, like the snow kind of comes like too late in winter. You know what I'm saying? I feel you, you son of a bitch. Yeah, we could thank climate change for that. Fuck the climate. Fuck the climate. Fuck you, Mother Nature. And I wish you right. Hey, how about my New York Knicks? Let's talk about that, Alex. uh, Trust me, we will get to... I have plenty of thoughts on the Knicks, but unfortunately, we're going to have to save them to... uh, I was going to... Here's the thing, guys. I was going to start off the first half with basketball talk. I want to talk about um, the the Knicks and their big win. I want to talk about um the Nets and how much how they've been struggling and Kyrie is struggling. I want to do a burst at basketball show, but guess what, guys? What? A certain someone similar to how we affected the plans of last our last episode affected the plans of this episode. Guys, you want to guess who it is? Antonio Brown. Yep. 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 Antonio so, Brown, you are ruining our life. <laughs> you are ruining this podcast's life, Antonio Brown. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, but but basically, the Antonio Brown saga has just gotten more and more crazy. Adam, um, let's not talk about Antonio Brown no more. You know, we. He, uh, he I, get- I've I've asked Michael. After this episode, I give you my word, we won't talk about Antonio Brown ever again. How about nope, that? I want, I want a basketball episode. Adam, it's been a we long will, we time. We will do basketball in the about, second half of the show. I promise you. We haven't you. did a hard one episode in a while. Give we, 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 you will do basketball. I promise you we'll do basketball in the second half of the show. But. But, but Antonio Brown came England. out with um, some very, you know, um, serious have allegations against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, and Tampa Bay released a statement through his attorney, um, Sean Burston. Is that how you pronounce his last name? I think so. I don't know. Okay, I can't we are, okay but... But basically, Antonio Brown like, has been accusing of that. Basically, that his ankle... He, he claims that... Well, what was that? They had a fractured ankle? Yeah, yeah, a fractured ankle, and the Bucks like forced them to, uh, pull, and the four Bucks basically ignored it, and um, like um, basically, and basically forced them um, out to play. I want to read the statement, but the statement is like 
way, way too long, but and I and I it would take like a couple of minutes to read the whole statement. So you can find a statement like from at, at from um at Adam Schefter on Twitter. Like Adam Schefter like um posted the statement on his Twitter. So if you want on uh, you can go find it there. But but long story short, Antonio Brown has been um has been like accusing um has, has been accusing um the Hitavay Buccaneers of cover of like um or or them to play like under the injury. Now the and obviously the Tampa Bay Bucks released statement um a responding to the allegations and this is what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers had to say on Twitter. And, and this is the this is the after that they released them too. This, after they released which by the way they released was made official um what was it yesterday? Yeah yesterday yeah well or or January six yeah okay yeah here's the statement quote. The Tampa Buccaneers have terminated the contract of a Tony Brown effective immediately. While Antonio did receive treatment on his ankle and was listed on the injury report the week leading up to last Sunday's game, he was cleared to play by a medical team prior to the start of the game. And at no point during the game did he indicate to our medical personnel that he could not play. We have attempted multiple times throughout this week to schedule an evaluation by an outside orthopedic specialist. Yeah, Antonio has not complied. Maintaining the health and wellness of our players is the most important to our organization. Hey, I, I want, I'm definitely going to give you guys the floor because I want to hear your takes on this. But as of right now, it's it's honestly hard to pick a side because on one hand, you know, on one hand, at these NFL organizations, you know, like it's it's I think they've proven that it's it's very hard to you know, to you know trust them because they've proven that over the years that um that they really like that they don't put um their players health and well being like as a high enough priority as they should. Like, like, look, if you look what I have all the, um, like, um, damage that has like, like both mental and physical damage that has gone to like players over the years from them, like, um, for all, for so many years, the nine CTE, like, so I'm not, so it's, so I'm not going to kind of necessarily say that, um, the Buccaneers are, de- are definitely, is it? They very well could be, Guilty, but at the same time, while well, you have to consider that history and history, you also have to take into account Antonio Brown's history. Antonio Brown, like, um, let's just put it like, guys, Antonio Brown has made it throughout the years, has made it very, very hard for, um, for or it is like, um, for us to like, um, take like things he says seriously. He's made it hard for that with, um, the stunty pull with the Raiders where he like. Bought his like um, bought his like a uh, GM over like nonsense like from like that video he did when he got released. The man he got released when they or, or his punished him for um his actions um to uh, to the way he's doing where uh, Sammy Buccaneers like running off the field shirtless. Like even if that was true, even if that was true, Antonio, did you really think that um running up the that that running up the field shirtless like, like that was gonna help your case? Like, uh, like us, uh, like honestly, Antonio, Antonio, like, as as if you're gonna make allegations like that, then you gotta be smarter, man. You gotta, you gotta uh, be smarter. Now, at the same time, what he's saying could be true. I definitely think there should be like an investigation done to this. But as of right now, guys, like, it's honestly hard for me to you know trust either side on this. It's hard for me to trust either side. Um, so did you guys see like the text messages that got leaked? Was it the ones about Brady? It was the one with uh Bruce Aarons. Did you see that? No, I did not see that. No, I did not see that. No, so apparently, see that. um, apparently AB and uh Bruce Aarons were talking and he already told like Bruce already knew about the injury beforehand. Mm-hmm. Like Cause I guess AB, I guess AB was trying to force it, and um, he was trying to, you know, play obviously, but he wasn't feeling good. And Bruce Aarons knew about it from beforehand, but you know, I guess since you know they don't have Godwin or nobody, you know, they really have Evans and him. Um, you know, Aarons was like, you know, I I know about the situation, but you know, let's just try and give it a shot. You know, give it a shot, and um, really. Also, they're trying to blame it on AB's mental health issue, and he's trying to say it had nothing to do with that. It was just the fact that 
you know, like, I guess he twisted his ankle a little. He just didn't feel like he can go back in the game. And they were trying to force him to go back into the game. And that's why he left because he didn't want to go back into the game. And he felt like, you know, he was being forced to do something he didn't want to. So that's that's why he left. It's pretty interesting. I mean, you don't, yeah. yeah. When we first saw it, you don't know what was going on on the sideline, you know? So, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no one else, no one can, no one truly knows. Aside from like the people on the sidelines, then no one truly knows like, um, what, what like everything that, um, goes on. Only the people that were on the sidelines, like, truly know, like, um, what, ha- what, what happens. But as I said, and here's the thing, like, giving AB, like I said before, we've like criticized AB in the past. I've criticized AB in the past, like, but also, like, and he also, like, I, I mentioned this. He pulled like a fake vaccination card stunt earlier, like earlier this season. So that's another thing to add to the list. But but here's the thing: two things can be true at once. A- Antonio Brown could be a diva. He could be a head case, and he could also be the victim in this scenario. Both things can be true at once. Ax, you agree? Uh, yeah, I definitely agree with you. So yeah, both so so yeah, both things can be true, which is why I I think that which I definitely why I definitely think uh, the NFL like definitely needs to um investigate this. Yeah, one hundred percent, brother, one hundred percent. Also, another thing I gotta get on AB. Did you hear um? What he said recently about Tom Brady. Yep. Antonio Brown on the Full Send podcast, he said that um, he basically said that Tom Brady like was his friend, saying, quote, to me, a friend is someone who's got your back. Not everybody in sports is going to be your friend. Tom Brady's my friend. Why? Because I'm a good football player. He needs me to play football. People have different <laughs> meanings of what friendship is. And he also said that, uh, the, that Tom Brady can't do shit by himself. And Tony Brown, <laughs> honestly, dude. Tom oh. Brady, no, 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 no. Here's the thing. Anto- Antonio Brown, number one, you say Tom Brady can't do shit by, as, by himself. He won six Super Bowls without you. He won six Super Bowls without you. Oh, say, oh, Tom Brady needs you because I'm a fo- good football player. He needs six football players. He won six Super Bowls without you. So pipe down I tell you around. That's number one. Number two. He's Tom, the no, no, thing. Tom, Tom Brady, like Tom Brady, like, was the one who he recruited you uh to, to, to like Tampa Bay. He recruited you to the Patriots when he first got cut. Like, like after like he got cut from the Patriots, he, he, he gave this guy like one chance with the Patriots, and then he got cut. And then like he helped get him another chance for the Tampa Buccaneers and helped him get a Super Bowl. He helped this guy get Super Bowl. I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you guys, I believe, probably believe that if that Tony Brown wasn't on the Buccaneers, the Buccaneers still have a decent shot, have a pretty good shot to win the Super Bowl. If you take Tony Brown on the team, the Bucs still have a pretty good shot to win the Super Bowl. So, Tom Brady brings this guy out to the Buccaneers. He helps, he, Tom Brady helps him win a Super Bowl. He gave this guy millions of chances when no one else won. And this is how you repay him. This is how you play him, and now that Tom Brady stuck up for you like during the postgame performance after you stormed off the field like a maniac, he stood up for you and cared about you myself. And this is how you repay him, guys. Right now, if I'm Tom Brady, and I'm, I'm, I'm telling Antonio Brown to kick rocks, I, I would literally call up uh, Antonio Brown right now. I would text him and say, "Kick rocks." I would say the same thing. Yeah, Michael, can you please rant on this, please? Okay, Please let take me the wheel here for me. Hold up, Antonio Brown. Tom Brady has more, more, more talent in his pinky than you have your whole damn body. Let's see, Tom Brady, what greatest quarterback to, ever, to probably to play this sport? I agree to that. I agree. I agree. Antonio Brown, you. Is it what do you have against good quarterbacks that you can't cut the mustard or you just suck? You had the same problem with Big Ben. You said Big Ben wasn't shit. Okay, they did great. You go to Tom Brady recruits you to go to to the to, to the Patriots. 
You couldn't do shit there. You get cut. Not okay. Then you go to then you go to T- Tampa Bay. You know, you win your Super Bowl. You're turning into the Dennis Rodman of the NFL. Yeah, with you, Antonio Brown. And you used to be one of my favorites to watch. But all, all seriousness, Antonio Brown, what are you going to do now? Go to the boxing ring and get knocked out, out against Jake Paul and Logan Paul? Hell, your career is over. What are you going to do? Keep going to the next game for the rest, the rest of your life? Once that NFL, once that contract is terminated, you're screwed. Are we all me and my me and my partners over here think you probably did career and worse investments? And Marcellus put a damn shirt on, brother. Adam, all seriousness. What are we gonna do with Antonio Brown, man? I just can't deal with this motherfucker. Yeah, I let's change the subject. I, 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 and that's the thing, Michael. Like with this deep with this drama between him and the Buccaneers. Stuff like this, you agree, Michael, makes it harder for you to believe him. First of all, Antonio Brown, go get some pussy. That's what you really need. Go get some pussy. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but like I said before, like I said before, like, I still believe the NFL should investigate this because both this can be true. Like Antonio Brown can be a diva. He can be like all like the negative attachments you can like it. You could throw his way, and he could still like uh, be the victim So. I definitely think the NFL should investigate this and get to the bottom of it. And guys, that's all the Antonio Brown talk for um, one episode. Wouldn't you agree? That's all the Antonio Brown talk we need for one episode. But before we get to Mike's hot take, I also have a we do have a couple of giant stories here. Or he's here, guys. Did you um did you hear um um this JoJo story? So basically, uh, I don't think so. Like so, basically, jo- oh, it was actually like um, it actually happened like the when we were recording our last episode, but I didn't hear about it until after he finished recording, so like so I couldn't bring it up then. But Joe Judge after the after the Giants lost um last Sunday to who was it the Sh- Chicago Bears I think, I think it was the Bears after they got blown up by the Bears um, Joe Judge went off. On uh, the on the media, he went on an eleven minute rant, and like he's saying a bunch of stuff, which again I can't give you the exact quotes because it's way too long. But he's been he was taking shots at um Ron Rivera, the Washington football team head coach. He was taking shots at Pat Shermer, uh, the former Giants head coach and current offensive coordinator of the Denver Broncos. Like um uh, and um and, and like he it was just like a, a complete you know. To, it was just a complete ir- irate, and uh, and Joe Judge honestly, Joe Judge, uh, like um, if you're listening to this, like, come on, dude, come on. I understand you're frustrated with the other uh, Giants of the games, but and and it's saying if you for a coach right now who um is like on the who's right now on the hot seat and could potentially lose his job, this doesn't help his job security. This does not help us, Jock. Sure, we all know how much John. Ma- we all know how much John Mara hates it when um, like when players like uh when, when when people like embarrass the Giants organization like this. We all know how much um John Mara hates it. Look at all the drama he got into um with, with OBJ and like and like all that stuff. Look at look. At, we all know John Mara, do- Mara doesn't let, like that. So you're gonna go out there like um. With with this, like after you, uh, your team has just had a really bad season, like another yo know, dog shit season, and you're gonna go off on a new York, on on, on me like that and like take shots at every everyone, guys. I think it's a guys. I, I don't know what's gonna happen, but if if honestly right now, I, I, do I think Joe Judge is gonna be back this year? I also think he will be back, but at this point. If I if you giving me a choice between like um keeping him or letting him go, in my opinion, I think should, I, I I would personally let him go after this. Because like he's he hasn't done a good job. The Giants have progressed under him and ne- uh, under him he hasn't like he hasn't done a good job this season. Now he's gonna do this like um like 
like uh, and, 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 and it's not entirely as fuck because I just have for the part of me why I'm guys just like because I want the Giants to completely reset. But but long story short, this doesn't help his case. You nailed it on the head, brother. Yeah, I think you nailed it on the head too. I always know how it when it comes to the Giants, don't I? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> speaking of the Giants, this is another head. Uh, one more. Um, this is one more um head Giants head coaching a rumor. One more Giants story before we get to Mike's hot take. Did you guys hear this rumor from Adam Rutberg of, Rutberg of ESPN? Mm-hmm. Apparently, Jim Harbaugh, like um, there's been a lot of rules that Jim Har- Harbaugh, um, current like uh, Michigan head coach, like is interested in returning to the NFL, and that and that if he were if he were to return to the NFL, the job. Ju- Ice job is a job that would interest him, and I I I said before, guys, like if let, let's say the Giants do move on from Joe Judge and they are gonna get a new head coach, Jim Harbaugh would be like at the top of my list as far as head coaching candidates that I would want because because his because if you if you bring in a guy like Jim Harbaugh, here's what you're doing: you are bringing a guy that is that is you're bringing a you're bringing a proven guy. We've seen with Jim Harbaugh. Can do like um in the NFL like um like we 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 see him he's made it to a Super Bowl four look at all the look at all look at how look at how um the success he had with the San Francisco 49ers and look at uh, and look at him look look at him what he's doing right now with um the Michigan Wolverines so so that's number one he has a proven resume you're getting a guy with a proven resume like none of these past three head coaching hires that the um the Giants did Ben McAdoo Pat Shermer or Joe Judge. None that I prove it coach your base. If you bring in a um, Jim Harbaugh, you are getting a guy with a proven coach resume. That's number one. Number two, bring in a guy, like I said before, with a proven coach resume. When I talk about the Giants needing to shake things up, when I talk about them like um like need, need like an organization overall, bring in a guy like Jim Harbaugh, that's the kind of thing I would shake the organization up because you're bringing someone that's going to demand respect. You're bringing someone who's going to demand results, and you're going to bring someone who's Really good at, in my opinion, change the culture of this team and hopefully get this team in in the right, di- right direction. So, so do I think it's gonna happen? No, but if but if I'm a Giants fan and if the, if the Giants like um are looking for a new head coach, Jim Harbaugh would be like one of my top candidates. Um, I was about to say, um, as a Giant fan, man. When you saw Daniel Jones get took that early, mm-hmm. what were you really thinking? That was I took true. Adam got watching you. What were you really what, thinking, Adam? When when Daniel Jones got picked six overall, what were you really thinking? Did you really I, think? I, 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 I fainted. I fainted. <laughs> I hated the pick. <laughs> I hated the pick. And, and, and look, I, I will admit, I will admit that, that Daniel Jones has been as bad as I thought he would be, but no, still, like horrible. um, but he has to be a horrible. But here's the thing: he's just I said before. Was, I mean, it's the same thing with Daniel Jones. Like, is he going to be the guy that takes your franchise to the next level? And as of right now, the answer is no. I'm sorry, Marcel. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, and then you look at the debt that you guys have. I mean, what? You guys picked up Jake from Georgia, and then you got Mike Lennon. So, did you guys really even solve a problem? I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. Still need exactly. A they, get, they couldn't even get a, a, a confident backup for him. They couldn't even get a confident backup for him, which yeah, I get. That's so. a long list of like uh, the mistakes that Dave Gilman has made during his tenure. But see, that's another mistake. It's just mistake after mistake. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I've been saying it for a so, while. I, I, like, I my, think, our uh, sons, you know me, I could rant about these past five G- seasons <laughs> of the Giants for hours. Huh. Right now? Uh, yeah, I already know. I already know, man. And I'm I have to say, at least with your right. Jets, Marcellus, you have, like, some sort of, like, um, you have, like, some sort of core to, like, look forward to. You have a core of, like, Zach Wilson. You have a uh, your core, but you have, might have your future quarterback, Zach Wilson. You might have your future head coach, Robert Sala. You might have your um, GM and um, Joe Douglas. You so you, 
you you know that there's a chance that all three of them could would work out. With the Giants, like the ch- eh, there's chances they don't have a general manager, they very likely don't have a head coach, and they very likely don't have a quarterback. Yeah. Um. Listen, Alex. You, I mean, listen, Adam. You already know my opinion on that Zach Wilson pick. I wasn't, I wasn't fond of it at all. But I mean, he's had his moments. Me, he's had some games where you know he looked, looked like he's good. But he's a rookie, so you know it takes time. He just has to settle in. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I feel really like I feel like none of these rookie quarterbacks can be judged fairly in their first season. Yeah, because none of them, aside from um, uh, Matt, aside from Mac Jones, none of them have been really anything special. None of them have been good. So, so we, so it's really also we wait and see when it comes to Zach Wilson, Trevor Lawrence, uh, Trey Lance, Justin Fields. Just wait and see on all of them. I think Trey Lance is really a ball in that. I love, I love Trey Lance, man. I'm really surprised that Trevor Lawrence isn't doing shit, really. Well, I, 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 well, I am kind of surprised, but you got to remember the organization he got drafted into. Like, look at the dumpster fire that's been, like, in Jacksonville a bit there in the season. Yeah, they don't really have a, a top receiver, man. That's not really they don't have it. anything. No, they don't, don't have anything. Top they don't have a coach. They don't have, they don't anything, have anything. They have I mean, nothing, bro. I mean, Alex, do you have any thoughts? Uh. I can't really speak on the the Jets side of things because I'm not too familiar though with that squad. Yeah, keep but, it moving. If you don't know, keep it moving, Playboy. <laughs> we fucking with you. All right. Um. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you guys want to move on to Mike's hot take? I feel like I think we're done talking. Ju- ju- I, I, you know, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens with Joe Judge. We'll see, like. After this Sunday, if um, the Giants do make a coaching change, and we'll see what happens. It's gonna be very interesting. But I'm telling you guys, like, if like uh, if like um, was it our next episode or an episode from now? Like, we come, I come on, and you know, um, and Kevin Abrams and Joe Judge and Daniel Jones are gonna be like um that trio that takes the Giants like into the next season. I am not gonna be happy. You will see a livid Adam Grisani if that happens. But guys, we gotta move on to the segment of the show. What pun am I gonna use this time? Oh, I got one. The segment of the show that is like New Jersey bagels and New Jersey pizzas. Mike's hot take. Mike, can you take it away? Let me tell you. Uh, let me tell you something, Adam. Sorry, what? I always want to do my Hulk Hogan impersonation, but it didn't work. Okay. What is my hot take for today? You know what? I'm going to talk about man, Lance Stevenson, man. Put some respect on this man's name, brother. Oh, yeah. That game he had, I guess, the Nets. Put some respect on his damn name. He hasn't played an NBA game in two years. He was on the last two years ago. Two years ago, he was on. He was on my Lakers. I am telling you, Lance Stevenson, great player to watch. He's a great player. He hasn't been in the league in two years. 20 points off the bench on the Indiana Pacers team. I'm telling you, boys, Indiana Pacers should start Lance Stevenson. He shouldn't be coming off the bench. He's a great player, in my opinion. He's a top 75 player in the league, in my opinion, if he can stay healthy. I'm going to say top 75, top 70. He is good. Top 75 player, I can't give you that. What? His numbers just haven't been good enough. His numbers just haven't been good For enough. For the Indiana too. Pacers? Terrible team. He's No, you say he's a top 75 player. I can't give you that. He's a top 75 player. He's the... M- uh, M- Michael Cunningham, do you know how many points he's averaged so far this season? He only played one game. 
Oh, no, 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 no. This regular, this regular season. Do you know how many points he's averaged? Twenty. One point eight points. He's averaged one point eight points. Wait, my, 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 my mistake. He's averaged five point eight points. That's not much better. Like five point eight points. I'm sorry. Last Houston, po- points. top seven five player. I can't give you that. I'm sorry. He had yeah, a great teams- game, but. I'm sorry, that's not enough for me. He for is to a, say. He's, he's top, better than the half players, I can say. Lance Stevenson, before he was on the page, before he left the NBA, when he, was, when, when he had that run with the Pacers, he should have been an all star one of those years. He should have been the most improved. Wait, he was the most improved player one year? Or almost most improved player? Was he the most improved player? Let me check. Was he? Hold up. Let me check. I'm gonna... No, he wasn't. He he was in the top. This man, I think, and I watched Lance Stevenson in person. I know Lance Stevenson. I don't know his, I know Lance Stevenson. I've seen the brother play many times in Brooklyn when he grew up in Lincoln High, which was a well-known school in Brooklyn for basketball. As my cousin played with Lance Stevenson. What, so you play with Lance Stevenson? No, not him. I never oh, play okay, with Lance Stevenson. Okay, no. okay. I have other family. I, I would never. <laughs> I would never guard Lance. <laughs> My cousin's from Brooklyn. I would say his name out of privacy for him. Point is, boys, Lance Stevenson can play. Adam, mm-hmm. in my opinion, he has a, one of the most deadliest crossovers in the NBA. Probably top three crossovers. All right, top three crossovers in the NBA. I'm, this is kind of like getting to like insane territory here. I'm sorry, top Adam. Have you ever seen cro- Adam? Look at this. I see his crossovers. Yeah, not it's top deadly. three in the league. It's deadly. not top three in the league. I said top ten, you idiot. Top ten, I'll give you. Not top three. I said top ten. I didn't say. You top said top three. ten. Okay, I misheard you. I thought you, you said get your clean them big ears of yours. <laughs> Try to make me go downhill. Point is, Adam, Lance Stevenson is a bucket. He just needs to be in the right system. I mean, he, I mean, he, could, be, he could be a really soft, he could be a nice soft player off the bench, but he could be a good a, like, I'm sorry, I think a pretty too much stock at that one thirty point game. Yeah, yeah, it was an amazing game on Lance Stevenson's part, but there that he got, it's all about consistency. What has he done since that game? What has Adam. he done since that game? He can play if if he's he in the NBA. Play. He's a he's a decent he's a decent player, but if you're in the NBA, I think you're you can play for a reason. I think you're overrating him. Like as far as NBA standards, and I think you're overrating. Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like obviously Adam, he's an NBA player. He's a, like, Adam, is he in the NBA? I, Answer my question. He's in the, he's in the NBA. I can't Answer my question. Shoes. Can, like, an player, shoes. can an NBA player? Can any NBA player can start on any team? You know that as much as I do. Wait, 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 wait. Are you telling me right now that Lance Stevenson could start on the Brooklyn Nets? On any team that's bad, he could start on. All right, any team he's bad. Okay, okay, I could give First you that. Of all, I, could, I could give you. I could give Jay, you. He could start if James Harden gets injured. God forbid. Start. If James Harden gets injured, you freaking moron. <laughs> I feel I'm said, this close to getting out of my seat. I'm this close. <laughs> You, you're telling me if Lance Stevenson was their backup shooting guard and James Harden goes down with an injury, he won't start. Ty Mills will start over him. Ty who? Mills will start over him. No, I Bruce know you Brown would crap. start over him. Who, who? Bruce Brown would start over him. You saying Bruce Brown is better than Lance Stevenson? Yes. You're on drugs. Moving <laughs> on. <laughs> I'm not on drugs. I am not on drugs. I'm sorry. Coke. You are on drugs. You do it crack cocaine. You do it cocaine. Crack. Hell, it's <laughs> All right, let me sh- let's, let's check out their stats here. Sorry, Adam, um, you're just doing drugs. Bruce Brown, <laughs> seven point one points, seven point one points per game, four point two total rebounds, two assists. Lance Stevenson, Lance Stevenson just got back in the league. You got five point eight points per game, two point three total rebounds, two point three assists. Look the only thing he has to be on is. Is point three says stop it, Michael Cunningham. Stop points, it. Career. Stop. Stop. Go career points, stop. you moron. Adam, you only talk about the season, right? 
All right, Bruce has six point nine career points this season. What's, 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 Lamb, sorry, what's Lamb Stevenson's point this season? Like this season, no. Bruce Brown is six point nine points per game this season for Bruce Brown. Bruce Brown is a nobody. Alex, you, you know, five point, Bruce, last year said five point <laughs> eight points this season. Well, I, I, if I had a, if I had. My hand and I and I had and, then, and, like, and, and their career numbers the aren't that different either. So I'm sorry, oh, Michael. I I'm can't t- give you that. I'm telling you, you are saying that Lance Stevenson, who probably has doubles in his like prime, eight, yeah, in his prime, yeah. He, he's still a bucket. He's a he's a good player, but he's a bucket, a walking he's bucket. Not, he's a, not a walking bucket. You did not just say you did not just come here on this podcast and say Lance Stevenson <laughs> is a walking bucket. He was a walking bucket for one game. That's it. No, but Lance Stevenson's been a walking bucket for a while now. For his whole career. No secret. Yeah, for his whole career. He's it's a real poster game average is eight point five. Adam. Adam, Adam, what did I tell you? <laughs> stick to baseball. Me, Marcel, and Alex stick to basketball. Because you have no idea what you're fucking talking about. Okay? I have a pretty good idea of what you, I'm talking about. Thank you very no, much. You have a better chance of hair coming out your ass than you know what you know what you're talking about basketball, for God's sakes. Or if he's a you're walking back, why is that so long? If he's been walking back, why is it out of Derek so Jeter coming out of your ass Giving you giving birth to Derek Jeter pooping out your ass. If Les Stevenson is a walking bucket, why has it been out of the leaks for so long? Because it's hard to get leaked. What you? It's hard. Think about it. What's the thing? First of all, the Lakers are a good team. The, the, are you talking about? They shaved me hard from the get in the league. It's he's a walking bucket. If you're a walking bucket. It means but you, you are one of the best the scorers court, in the NBA. You can have problems on the damn court. What problems has he got off the court? On the ability to show he's always late for practice. I know, Lance. I am telling you this. Oh, my God. You know what you're talking about. Just stick to baseball. <laughs> Alex, jump in because I can't deal with this. Ax no jump in. Ax jump in. Save us here. Save us. Marcellus, you can jump in too. Save us. Adam, just stick to baseball. <laughs> Listen, man, Lance Stevenson has been – he's been a problem. Bucket. He's it's been, been a, a bu- problem. Thank you. Alex, he's has been Lance bucket. Stevenson been his problem his whole entire this, career? This isn't, this isn't really new. And um, I'm glad to see – I'm actually glad to see that he's back in the league. I'm glad to see like, him back in the league, too. Don't get me wrong. I'm glad to see Lance Stevenson Adam, back in the league, Adam, shut up. You're a little bit. Adam, you, you're a hypocrite. I'm go- shut up. I just want to make these Chris. clear here because my Cunningham Chris. Chris. Shut is skewing my Chris. words. He's skewing my words. I want to make sure that's clear. So that way, Michael Cunningham and smear and and like a miss and and miss it for my our viewers of what I'm saying. Lance Stevenson is. I'm happy to see Lance Stevenson back in the NBA, and I'm 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 glad that he's back in the NBA. He's not a walking bucket. If I post this all over social media. And say my dumbass best friend said Lance Stevenson in a bucket. Now, many people in Brooklyn are going to come to your house and beat the living daylights out of you. I'll post this clip on Twitter. How about that? I'll post this clip on Twitter. How about that? And we'll see what our viewers think. What, Alex, go ahead. Look at it? Alex, go ahead. You're the only one that hasn't spoke this hot take yet. So go ahead. Okay. Uh, I just, I just uh, searched Lance Stevenson and it says he's averaging 5.8 points per game. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you. That's the, that's, that's the problem right here, man. You guys always go to stats and you, you just go, go to his. He's, here's the thing. You gotta, he just he helped he a five young team. That's what I'm saying. Just because he averaged 5.8 points. Doesn't mean they weren't quality points, quality I'm buckets. Not, I'm not saying I'm not saying he's a bad player, uh, Marcel. I'm not saying he's a bad player. I'm saying Mike. I'm not saying Mike Cunningham here is sure. overrating him. How's he? How am I overrating him, Adam? Mike, where is he? Say he's a walking bucket. Mike, is he? Mike, is he in your top seventy-five? 
he not in my top seventy five. He probably you literally just said player. he was in your top seventy five. He is Earlier in his hot take, you say he was in his top seventy five. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. He's a, he's a, he's a, NBA he's a for decent a player. You he's have a to be a great player. player. He's a decent player. You just don't like him because he's on the Nets. Shut up. You on the Nets, you'll be banned. He's a Brooklyn guy. Of course I love Wes Anderson. He's a Brooklyn guy. No. I'm a, Liz, I love Brooklyn watching, guys. Liz, I know you. So if you're watching this show, I'm just signing and say you're not a top 25 player. All right. For Stevenson, I mean, Les Stevenson, if you want to, like, come on, come on the show and, you know what? He he gonna curse come you on the show, out. my brother. We'd love to have you on. He love to have you on. Curse your ass. <laughs> your ass. Right, what do I say? Michael, is I that mean, the end of your hot take? I mean, he's he's definitely not consistent. Because right. we ain't gonna talk about consistency on the Sixers now. Half your team can't stay consistent. So shut up. Wait, 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 your wait, wait. don't count. My squad is on a 16 winning streak. What's yours? Really? Because you have an overrated center, but that's just a different story. But moving on. Uh, but <laughs> my hot take before I rip Alex to shreds on why the Sixers are overrated. <laughs> well, what's your record? Well, what's the Sixers record? You're on a six-game winning streak. Okay. Hold up. Because you motherfuckers are really pissing me the fuck off today. Okay. You guys are 20. You guys are in the fifth seed. There are four better teams than you guys. Bulls, who shouldn't be in first place, by the way. Bucks in the heat. And who do you guys play next? Let me see who you guys play next. Houston. They're playing in shitty teams. I've been playing in shitty ass teams. Only good team you beat was Brooklyn. That was it. You guys gotta. You guys gonna. You guys gonna lose to the Heat. Lose to the Clippers. And you guys gonna lose. Grizzlies and my Lakers, but we ain't gonna talk about that. And that's the bottom line. Point is, my boy, all love here. All love. You know, it's all love here in the game. You know, we all cool. But Adam, I can't deal with your stupidity, Adam. You know what I'm saying? Saying Lance Stevenson isn't a top ten player, but I'm done. You I'll literally just said that he was uh, as a 70, top 75 player. At least say he wasn't that you're saying he was. Okay. Uh, is your hot take over with? Yeah, because I'm about to show okay, you. Okay, okay, okay. I'm about to All go right, on I'm going to go first. Uh, we're going to borrow this. Like, here, well, M- Michael Cunningham, do you want to hear my uh, verdict? Go ahead, push. All right, here, here's my verdict. Disapprove. That's it. That's my verdict. Deny, disapprove. Marcellus, Alex, go ahead with your verdicts. I disagree. Wait, you Wait, you, d- you disapprove too, Alex? Yes. Thank you! Alex is I so need, fast. Marcellus, Marcellus, yeah. get, get your vote in. Get your vote in I, now. I need, Mike, I just need to understand exactly what you're trying to get off the hot take, though. I'm just saying, put some respect on this motherfucker's name. He Adam's just mad that he can't dribble a basketball correctly. That's why he takes him Lance Stevenson. Ah, I'm gonna prove with this one now. I, I think I think Lance is I don't think Lance is bad at all. I mean, he's a bucket getter, man. I know he averaged five point eight. It doesn't sound like that much to you guys, but as you can see from the other night, Adam when when he wants to, he can. I won't I disagree with you on that. I won't disagree with you on that. So it's tied to two. It's that way. So, Marcellus, you're approving? I approve. All right. So, so two to, it's still two to one. Me and Alex and I. No, wait. I'm so sorry, two Michael. Two two your hot take has been denied. No, wait, your Adam, record you can't do is, that. Adam. Your record is now. It's two to two. 57 and 7. Congratulations. Sorry, oh, Mike no. Crown. Hold your on. hot take record, this is your seventh denial. Your hot take record is what what whatever. I have a right to said. vote for my hot take. Wait. You can't vote for your hot take. I can't. I'm you using can't my vice vote president. For your hot take is no vote. Adam. Yes, sir, it's not. 
in American Idol. I'm using, right. I'm using my vice president like, right. I am using my vice president right. I am using my right. When someone auditions for American Idol and all the judges. This ain't American Idol. Idol. We ain't American Idol. We can't fucking sing. the person who auditioned have a vote? <laughs> yes, this is me, nigga. I'm, Adam, I'm from the hood. <laughs> Adam, I'm from the hood. I never watched American Idol. Yo, Adam, we quit. Me and ourselves, we going on strike. <laughs> yeah, Adam's a pussy. Say what? I guess that's the end of the show. On behalf of Michael Cunningham, Alexander Rich, and Marcellus Murdoch, please give us a name or comment at the end of the view. Oh, hey, Adam's back. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you guys know, that is a definite uh, clip. That is a definite highlight. <laughs> yeah. I probably just woke up uh, my, my our downstairs neighbors after that. <laughs> Right, can we okay. move on now? Can we move on now? I got one more joke. Hey, Adam. Uh, all, right, all right, one more joke. If I don't like it, you're going in the waiting room. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. You can't put me in the waiting room. You know why, Adam? Why? Because I'm God, motherfucker. And you can't you can't kill God, bitch. Well, good enough. Good enough. All right, guys. <laughs> good man. Guess what, Michael? We're yeah. finally doing some basketball talk. About man. fucking time. Hey, God, uh, do you guys want to do Knicks first, or you guys got to want to do Nets first? Please, let's do the Knicks. I need. I need. All right, let's do, let's do life. let's do the Knicks first. That I'm was. I'll admit that that was a big win for the Knicks. That was a big win for the Knicks over the Celtics, and a big win for them over um the Hawks. But I got a Nick, guys. I. Remember, guys, we are not that far removed from the Knicks show being at the at the low seed and out of like um the a race for the play in. We are not that far removed from that. So, guys, I want to ask you with the start to the season, the Knicks are nineteenth winning. Marcellus and Michael, are you worried about your Knicks? I'm not worried at all, Adam. I'm not worried. Here's why. Last year we were in we were in ninth place. Last year, Adam, we won a game winning streak. Remember that? Mm -hmm. We got into the fourth seed. I'm not worried. Remember that game? Remember that year? Last year, Adam? Yeah, I remember that year. The Knicks had a winning streak. They kept winning. Here's the thing. We shine. There's there's no way we're not missing the playoffs. We're not going to miss the playoffs. There's no possible way. We just got to play Timbo Walker. Timbo Walker got hurt. Obley Toplin, who is like a, is a stud. He he's the probably the most athletic player I've seen in this in this in the last two draft classes. That motherfucker could dunk a basketball. And I dare y'all to disagree with me saying Obley Toplin isn't a high flying dunking machine. He's all right. What? He's all right. Oh, 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 wait, wait. Who's better? Obi Toppin, who's better? Oh, wait, question. Who's better? Obi Toppin or Julius Randle? Who's better? Obi Toppin or Julius Randle? I'll just put this motherfucker in the waiting room. He asked a stupid question. (laughs) This buffoonery? In my heart, take out a double or poopery? Now that's a dumbass question, Adam. That's like asking me who's better, James Harden or Kevin Durant. Wait, wait, wait. you just compared Obi Toppin and uh. That's like asking me who's better, James Harden. You know who better, Kevin Durant is better than James Harden. <laughs> he doesn't get what I mean, but it... Alex, this <laughs> idiot doesn't know what I mean, does he? <laughs> oh my god, he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> He just misread what I he. Hey Marcellus, did he just misread what I said? I think he did. Like, you. 
Before you start, before you start, you did not just say that (laughs) you did not just compare Obi Toppin. You did not just imply that the bar between Obi Toppin and Julius Riddle is anywhere. Is is like you missed what I just said. You misheard what I said. You basically compare making me compare. It's like basically we all know Kevin Durant is a player played in James Harden. I'm basically saying, Jer- uh, Ju- um, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> you fucking idiot! Clean <laughs> them damn big ears of yours. Clean your damn big fucking ears. You fucking moron. How are you hawkies nah, up in here? Bad. I'm tired of all you fucking white people. I'm tired of you hawkies niggas on this show. Can't clean their fucking ears. I was a big and fuck, and now I'm getting at him. I'm sorry. You about to make me go up and make me lose my damn arm pressure. Fuck. Each single one of your two throats and shove it to my dog. And Adam, I swear to God, and I hope God is watching me, and God does not strike me for killing you tonight. <laughs> Dear help me, God. <laughs> God forgive me for my sins. I know today is Saturday. Wait, today is Saturday? Today is Saturday. So dear help me God if I don't murder this boy. <laughs> Adam, can I just smack the shit out you? I really do. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Is it my turn? Yeah. <sighs> my name. Save, save, save us. Save us from Adam's before my next man, where do I begin? I'm not gonna lie, I haven't really been watching them um, like I have last year. You know, there was a reason to watch last year, it's still early in the season, so you know what? I won't give up on them just yet. I, I, I did love that game yesterday, you know, but my thing with the Knicks, man, is the consistency last year. They were consistent. They were winning the games. They should have won. They were, what, in, like, the top five in, like, all the defensive categories. Now, all of a sudden, they're in the bottom half of the league again. It's just looking like typical Knicks. So, I'm not understanding how last last year, you know, you, you guys make a run to the playoffs. You know, you make a deep run. Well, not deep. I can't say it was deep because, you know, Trey not this out, but. You know, it was a good showing. You know, Randall was hooping. You know, Randall was looking good. RJ was hooping. You know, the team was clicking. And now it's like we get Evan. By the way, great game last night from Evan. 41 points. I know you guys saw that. But my thing with the Knicks is we need this every night. Right now we just look like a play. We look like a playing game team right now. I don't know if you would agree about that, Mike. I think we look like a play. I I think we look like a playing team right now. I, I hope we they prove me the wrong. Game, most death. I hope they prove me wrong, but if and if they can, I, I feel like that's where they can get right now. They just have to show me more. We need to see this every night. The defense is not good. You know they suck at defending the three. It's just the little kinks that, you know, needs to be fixed. And now you really have to question, was Tom Thibodeau really coach of the year? Last year he was. But as coach of the year, you can't let this happen. You can't go from one good season to a bad season the next. You got 100%. I, agree just 100%, as, 100%, I don't understand that. I don't, it's never I – I can't say it's never happened. But to be coach of the year – and then mm-hmm. have the team playing like shit. I see what exactly. You, mean. you know what I mean. So it's just like, should he really got coach of the year over Monty Williams, for example? Look at what Monty Williams is doing. You know, Monty Williams is doing an outstanding job with that Suns team. You know, Suns been a laughing stock. You know, for a while, and now look at them. You know, 
coming off a, a finals, finals appearance. You know, they're still doing what they're doing now. They got one of the greatest point guards to ever grace the basketball, Hall of Famer, you know? It's just little stuff like that. And um, I'm not saying I expect the Knicks to get a Chris Paul you know, or somebody of that caliber, but my thing, my point is you have to be able to produce with what you got now. RJ isn't horrible. I don't, I don't have a problem with RJ. I really don't. I just besides. I just besides. I don't, have, I don't have a problem with RJ. I just think Randall, and this is why I was, and this is why I was telling everybody, man. I always told people that Randall is never. He was never our first option. So everybody's acting surprised, you know, at what's transpiring. But he's never been a first option. Look, look at look at the teams he's played on. Played on the Lakers. He played with Kobe. You know, rest in peace, Kobe. Look, Kobe was obviously the first option there. And then he goes to play with the Pelicans. He's coming off the bench for AD. You know, he, he had a great, you know, year coming off the bench. But, look, he's never been the top option. So now you sign him, you bring him in New York. By the way, you know New York and, and Philly, are, those are two of the toughest fan bases to, you know, play in front of so. They're gonna they're gonna criticize your every move. They're gonna criticize everything that you do, you know. So it's not easy, but at the same time, people are you know they're bashing Randall and stuff, you know this and that, you know. Obviously, we we saw what he did last night with the thumbs down when they were cheering the MVP. You know they were cheering for him. You know, obviously, he says that the outside talks is again to him. But you can see that it is. It's again to him. So I just think what Randall needs to do is he just – and this is what a lot of players, and you know, we see now in the league, you know, a lot of people like to talk, whether it's social media or whatever, but they just play on, just play ball. You know, we're not asking you to go out every night and drop 40, you know, 40 and 14 a game. You know what I mean? But don't give us eight points one game, then you give us 35, and then you go back to giving us like four. You know, you know what I mean? Like, they gave you this extension. You know, they're paying you this money. They're, they're counting on you. You know what I mean? They're counting on you. So, Randall needs to step up, man. If this team is going to actually, like I said, play in right now. That's where I see it. If this team is going to expand beyond that, it's going to go off Randall's play. This is Randall's. T- it, this is Randall's team. It's it's obvious. This is Randall's team, and they can only kick the tire, you know, based on how he plays. So if he's not having a good game, it's gonna affect everybody. We've seen that. He doesn't have a good game. All of a sudden, RJ can't have a good game. You know what I mean? So he needs to start bringing some consistency around, and we need that from Evan for years. Well, we need it from the other players as well, not just him. And that's what the problem is. Everybody just puts this on Randall, you know, and they're not putting it on the team. It's team efforts, team ball. The team has to be able to, you know, be consistent. It's not just all on Randall, you know. So yeah, yeah, that, that, that's that's the thing though. The thing with Julius Randall is that he played at such a amazing level last season. And the story oh, he not that he's regressed. All-star. Yeah, he. The story not that he's regressed. All star. I feel like like his regression is like play a major part of why the Knicks like have like not been as good as, as last season. Because remember, last season they were the four seed. Four last season like, they were the four seed. A lot of people expected uh, them to be like near the top of the East, like this is too. Like guys, I, I think it's like um guys, it's not to look like that ain't happening. That ain't happening. I remember Michael, you picked them to be like what the third seed or the fourth seed. No, yeah. I, I told I told you guys before the season started that we were going to be maybe seventh, and that was pushed. I picked it. you guys to be I six. You, I picked you guys to be a six seed. I thought we were going to be four. I told you we weren't going to be that high. Because on I paper, they had a good team. I, but I told you this. I told you guys before the season started, look at the East. East is getting more competitive now. The East, uh, this might be a hot take right here, but I think the East right now hmm. is a little better than the West. Compared to why I I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that. 
I, I think right now you look at these teams, look at what Chicago is doing. You know, there, there's some solid teams. Look at Cleveland. Cleveland has been a laughing stock ever since LeBron left, you know, and they know that, but it doesn't mean they weren't trying to not rebuild. You know, they're quietly rebuilding, but look, look at look at what's transpiring now. Darius Garland is looking like he's looking like a the real deal. You know, Rubio got hurt, but you know, Rubio was playing well before he got hurt. It's just, and that's the thing. That's and this is where I bring this with the Knicks. You don't need all stars. You know what I mean? Look, because look, these guys, they're not even these guys. I don't even know if there was an all star on. They're all star on the team, on the Cavs team. They're all. There is going to maybe an all star this year. He's going to be an all star this year, but was there an all star last year? No, right? It was all star last year. Broke ass Kevin Love. Broke ass Kevin Love. You see, but my point and going back to the Knicks is that you guys don't need. Obviously, you know Randall's all star, but you, you you guys don't need all 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 stars to make it happen. You see this now in the league now. It's about role players. It every it's every portion of the game that matters now. From the bench, because you're gonna need a spark off the bench. You need a spark off from your starters. You just need a consistency all around. So that's really how I look at it. I mean, my sauce, my sauce, I don't disagree with anything with her say. But did you guys hear about this Jewish Randall story? I heard about it. That apparently he put, Michael, did you hear about it? Yeah. Long story short, he was pulling a, he was pulling a Francis Condor and Javier Byers by giving like the thumbs down to the fans. And at first, I was going to get on him for it because I'm like, so it's because the same way I got on Javier Byers and Francis Condor, like, like really, you're sure bringing your own fans or your team is struggling, like, what he wanted to do, sing Kumbaya, but then he we learned did. like a little bit more context about that. Apparently, like, um, but did you hear what happened? That like a certain group of Knicks fans, like on social media, were celebrating that he got COVID, so that Obi, I'm gonna like, get more minutes. I mean, yeah, that's why it was fucked yeah. up. Here's the thing about I mean, it's it's up. I mean, if, up I mean, to that. the Knicks as you did that, grow up. But like, what, seriously, what did I grow just up. Tell you, Adam? What did I just tell you? The Nick and Philly fan base are one of the toughest fans base to play in front of. They criticize your every move. Here's the thing about the is one thing. Bowie is one thing. Like, we should open up like, just because you want to see another player get more mad. That's, yeah. that's not cool. That's fucked up. It's not cool. Yeah, it's As up. New York fans, if we don't get our way with sports, we get petty. Yeah, we, yeah, we let you hear it. We we'll let you hear it, but Here's the thing, we never should mention about anybody having COVID. Like that's one thing. That's a serious thing. People that's, are dying. That's a serious that. shit. People die from people it. Are dying people are dying from it. Not cool. But and here's the thing: Randall knew what he was getting into when you play in New York. You know what you're getting into. Absolutely. You got in, in New York. You gotta be mentally tough. Waiting, there's a phase called New York Strong. Look at look at the New York greats. Look at Patrick Ewing. Look at look at all these guys. They they had rocky years. It, it wasn't all star. Yeah, and, I, I agree with you saying. That's why I I still that's why I still think it was a bad idea for Jewish Trail to do that because like you're giving a thumbs down to Knicks fans. Like those Knicks fans, like there's a pretty good chance they aren't the ones that were saying those three series, Julius. There's a pretty good chance that those fans like weren't the ones like that were engaging that type of despicable behavior. So. Why are you lumping the like um the whole fan base just because of like um those fans who sent those tweets? Like, why are you giving it to the whole fan base? And we're paying uh, you a shit ton of money, and we're paying yeah. you a shit ton of money. Let's be real here. Hmm? We knew that free agency class, you know, that Randall came from. Yeah. Everybody thought the Knicks were gonna get who? Who does Brooklyn have right now? Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving. That's who we were supposed to get. You know, that was the hype. The hype was we were supposed to draft Zion and then never hopefully lure Katie and Kyrie to the Knicks, you know? So, look, instead, you know, all that was going on, and then look what happens. We signed Julius Randle. Now everybody's like, huh? You know what I mean? I don't know, I don't know about you, Adam, but – 
I know Nick fans at first were like, "What the fuck?" I don't, I'm, I don't know. What oh, I know. Oh, I know that was the case at first. I know that was the case at first. There was a lot. I don't know if you know that one, but there, there was a lot of talk going on to that whole. The Knicks fans were excited. This, this was a very exciting time for us because we really thought we was gonna get a star. We haven't had a star t- since Melo. And it's crazy because New York is one of the, you know, New York is one of the be- best, like, it's like one of the most valuable fan bases now. You know, like, if you look at the numbers, the market, the marketability for New York is high. Even though, you know, they struggle, they suck and stuff is high. So the expectation is supposed to be high. The standard is set high, the bar is set high. And by us striking out and not getting Zion or KD or Kyrie, it all look bad because, you know, Nick fans like to talk. You know what I mean? Nick fans love to talk. And just by getting that, that was just like a shot in the foot. Then you see we get Randall, by the way. I, I didn't mind the Randall pickup at all. I, I honestly like it. It was a. But- I, I, I was saying solid pickup. It was a solid pickup. I didn't mind it, but I just thought that we were going to get somebody else to go along with them. And I'm sure a lot of people thought that too. Yeah, that's, that's the now, thing that you, you guys need to get someone like yeah. else because what's the best? What's Jewish Randall's ceiling? What What's the best case scenario for a Jewish Randall? Maybe, maybe on a really, really with, with like a LeBron or MJ type, like the second best player he's on the not championship a first team. Option. He's a second he's not anywhere. option. He, Nowhere he's a, near first he's option. A, he's a second option at best at on best. a good day. At best. At best. I agree. Ideally, he should be a third option. Ideally, he should be a third option. He's a third op- I told you, look, I told you, who was he playing with originally? He played with the Lakers. Mm-hmm. He was not the first option there. We know that. We know mm-hmm. the first option was. He came off the bench. I don't even think he was really a – he was good, but was, was he really looked at as an option? I don't know. But then he goes to play with the Pelicans. If he gets hurt, he comes off the bench. He's playing crazy. Now everybody is like, whoa, you know, this, this guy is good. But would you ever, Adam, would you ever think, whoa, this guy is so good enough to be a first option? Yeah. Oh, I don't know what you think about that, Mike, but did you would think, looking at Randall, did you really think, oh, this guy's a first option? I don't, I don't think he's a first option. And that's what I'm trying to tell people. And I'm also trying to tell, because people are trying to bash Kemba. But I said, look at Kemba's career. If you look at Kemba's career, going back from UConn, he was the first option, Adam. First option, UConn. He gets into the NBA. He's playing with Charlotte. He was their only scorer. He was the first then option. Then he goes to Boston. Charlotte. Then he went to Boston. Look what happened in Boston. Didn't have a didn't have a good year. He was okay, but it wasn't the best. But this is what I'm trying to tell people. I tell people that Kemba was never a first option. No, my fault. He was a first option. He was never a second or third option. Bring him to the Knicks. Now, what is he? Supposed to, he's really supposed to be a third or fourth option now. So, in the NBA, it's all about adjustments. It's about how these players can make adjustments. What I think Kemp is, what, like 31 or 32? But he's had all these injuries, man. And that's another thing. Injuries, they can fuck you up so bad that it's just hard to, you know, come back. And Definitely. That's, that's what's going on with Kemba right now. He's not having... He's not having the, you know, eye popping year, but that's what I'm trying to tell people. I'm trying to tell. Look, we got Evan. You know, we tried to build a, you know, a culture. We got Evan. You know, we got Kemba. We got RJ. RJ, still, he's doing okay, but he still hasn't took off yet. You know what I mean? He looked good last year, but still room for improvement. He hasn't fully taken off yet. You know, I, I mean, I, I like. I think the sky's the limit for – I don't have a problem with RJ. I think the sky's the limit for RJ. Mm. But I'm just trying to tell people you can't bash Kemba because Kemba was never a second or third option. Man. Always a first option. Now the first option is supposed to be Randall. Right? And even Randall's not even being 
a good, a good first option, though. So I don't really know what a lot of people thought we were going to get out of this. Because, look, these guys don't even play defense. <laughs> like, Evan, uh, Evan Fournier was – you you guys think Evan Fournier was ever known for his defense or Kemba? You can think of him. Was he ever known for his Hell defense? To the exactly. He was never known for his defense. And, look, that's another thing right there. We need defenders. Why the freak are we getting more offensive players? I understand we need more scoring. But defense wins you championships, Adam. Definitely, definitely. It wins you championships. It's been proven. We've seen it. You can have all the scores in the world, but if they can't play defense, what's the point? You're going to score, score, score. It's going to be a shootout, and you're just going to end up losing the game. So, Unless your offense is, like, historically good. That's historically good, unless it's the Warriors. Unless it's the Warriors, yeah. Unless it's the Warriors. Unless yeah. it's, like, the Nets are, like, big three, you know? You need that type of level of offense to make up for, you know, like, a mediocre exactly. defense. Exactly. And... The Knicks just aren't doing doing so well at doing that right now. And really, you could really bring I, I honestly, man, I hate James Dolan. I don't know about you, Mike. I, I, th- I think we Dolan. all hate James Dolan. I hate James Dolan. James Dolan is the reason why Michael, we're not Michael, do you hate James Dolan? He's, like I don't even have to I don't even have to ask. He's the that. reason. He's the reason why the Knicks are where they are right now. I absolutely hate that man. I could write a whole book on how much I hate, I hate that James man. Dolan. I could write a whole book. I, I, I think every Knicks fan hates that man. I, I absolutely He despise, doesn't do I shit for New York. Man. Leave the game of basketball. I despise that man. Peace. Absolutely despise shit. He's, he's awful. This man, Adam, this man really said, he did not want to bring Katie on because he was scared of his injury. Of his Achilles, yeah. I mean, I don't you- care. I understand about the Achilles and, you know, that you going to still start Kyrie. You're you not. Idiot. That's what I'm saying. You're not You're not the same after an Achilles injury. We've seen it. We've seen it with Boogie Cousins. We've seen it with other players. But this is K- Kevin Durant we're talking about. This is one of the best. He's one of the best scorers in the league. He's one of, he's the, league. One of the best scorers of all time. You're not gonna, pe- Adam? Are you passing my opportunity on Kevin Durant because he's Achilles? No, hell no. Hell no. To I don't no. think any of you guys are. So James Dolan, com- congratulations! You're the idiot you're, of the NBA. You messed up, and now look, it's the price you pay. Adam, put that football down. You didn't know you can't use it correctly. <laughs> You want to throw it and find out? Go ahead and throw it. Okay. You're not over here. All right. All right. Mm. Before we get to our bets, we, I mean, before, before we get to our bets, I did want to do some Mets talk here. Guess what, guys? Kyrie Irving's back as a part time player now. I got uh, jokes I, about that. I got jokes about it. Got jo- we'll, get, we'll get some jokes about that, but here's my quick thoughts on it. Like, Am I? Ha- I'll say it's basically a recap of what I said before. I pre- uh, one of those. So, am I happy to see Kyrie back? Yeah, because I'm ha- I'm happy that Kyrie's back. Because at the end of the day, like um, you're getting like um, you're getting like one of the best point guards in the league. You're getting one of the best players in the league back, and you're completing you know, this big three. But I'd be lying if I said this part time player nonsense, nonsense. Like it concerns me. It concerns me, especially going to the playoffs. Like when this gets to the playoffs, if like this. Type of stuff is it like resolved? Nets are gonna be in sh- trouble. Like they can get away with having Kyrie really as a part time player in the regular season. In the like the regular season, they're not gonna be able to get away with it in the postseason. So the Nets better. The Nets better. Nets better have some idea that they think that Kyrie is gonna be able to play full time, where he either gets vaccinated or the mandates change. Like come like postseason time, because if they don't, because the mandates don't, then they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna be in some trouble. They're gonna be in some trouble, and and, and what they I what they has the idea of how they could make it work like in the meantime of the regular season. They said before, or like one of the reasons they brought Kyrie back is because they wanted to you know rest James Harden and rest Kevin Durant. Now Kevin Durant and James Harden don't have to play as many minutes in it. So and that and that Kyrie Irving like once he gets that goal, he's gonna be able to play a lot of minutes. Like so, okay, I was like, here's his first thing to Kyrie, okay. You want to be a part-time player and only play road games? 
every single rogue that he plays the rest of the season, he plays at least 40 minutes. Or he plays like around 40 minutes. Because I was thinking, if, if you're going to be like a part time player, play more minutes per game than you would if you were a full time player. Like, uh, like if you're only going to be able to play rogue games, why not just play like. Why, why not just play, like, 40 minutes of, like, each road game? Why not go all out and play, like, a large majority of that road game? Because you're going to have, like, um all those off the, uh, home games as off days. I mean, Michael, Marcel, I don't know if you disagree with um, that idea. I agree. What, what did you say, Buckaroo? That they should – that. If Kyrie is going to be like a part time player, then they should play him 40 minutes a game. Yeah, 100%. Oh, yeah. Don't get There's me started no on Kyrie. Any less. Here's the thing you want to be a D bag. But however, the new mayor of New York City, who was a friend of my, the one of my boy's father, the new mayor of New York City. Oh, 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 oh. oh so you know I'm. Uh, oh, sorry, repeat that, Michael. One of my boys, his fathers, is the mayor of New York City. His name oh, is Jordan nice. Coates. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. So you're so friends with like his son? I got some inside information, so I can't tell you because we're on. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but the point is, do I think Kyrie are – here's the thing about Kyrie. Well, in the playoffs, the Nets are, are jeopardizing their chance of having Kyrie Irving playing as a part-time player. Adam, think about it. There's seven mm-hmm. games. There's seven games. There's four to seven games in the playoffs, right, Adam? For mm-hmm. series. And he only plays road games, right? He only plays road games. That's correct. So if I were to get the fifth seed, you know, get the fifth seed so you won't have home court advantage because you have more road games if you have to. Because you have them for most likely game one and two. Yeah, that's, that's, another, that's another big part. Of that. That's another big part. Which right now, and that's for the first seed in the D. So there's no, no way. The um, Bulls are. The Bulls are. The Bulls are? Yeah, the Bulls just took first place. Bulls just took first place? Oh, okay. But that, that'll still make the Nets like the second seed. So it'll be pretty hard for them. To, it will be like pretty hard for them to tank all the way to um, if they were, even if they would tank it all. So, I, I, they, so they Michael, that's a, good, the- that's a good idea. It, Theory, but it on, but on paper it just doesn't work in my opinion. Yo, here's the thing: the magic just sucks. <laughs> well, all seriousness, my brother. Well, all seriousness. Yeah, I'm t- going to tell you that Kyrie, player, but the Nets, what you going to? And I think they should have his pay if he's only playing half a game. I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that. Because it's not fair to players. I, I think it's not fair that other players that aren't vaccinated can't play. I think he shouldn't play either. And, and I love Kyrie. <laughs> and they know, other vaccinated players, they can't play. They can't play. And I I, I, so that's a- the one thing I don't get about this stupid mandate that that they're saying. Because they're, the, that's a, of the current mandate. They say that... um. That like home players like can't play like at Barclays Center or, or, or but like rope players who are unvaccinated can like it makes no sense. You're gonna let a rope player who's unvaccinated like play, but you're not gonna let a player like who's like on the home team like um play if he's not vaccinated. I think I think that mandate is so stupid. Hey guys, you know somebody that isn't vaccinated in the league? Who? Bradley Bill. Exactly. And, and he played so- he played at MSG. Yeah, he played MSG. It's, you know, it's so dumb, right, Marcellus? It's stupid. Yeah. It's stupid. Right. But, like, if, mean, if you're going to have vaccine mandates, have, 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 have all players like have vaccine mandates. But however, hold on. Make it, but for however, all. it depends for what state or or city you play for. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. But, the, um, the, the, but if New York City is going to have that type of mandate, then it should be for all players, not just like they should like like – they shouldn't like give restrictions, especially to players on the home team. Like, I think it's, I think that part's like really dumb. I have something to say about Kyrie, too. Go ahead. So, 
I honestly, I saw this coming. I don't know if you did, Adam, but I saw this coming, and I'm glad. Obviously, you know, I can't be a Brooklyn fan, but but I do love watching Kyrie Irving play basketball. Man, I love watching Kyrie Irving play basketball, and it just and that's, weird. that's the thing. That's the thing. Say whatever you want about Kyrie Irving love and all the stance he's taking. He's so much fun to watch, man. He's so much. He's special. He's a, he is a special, special talent. Special talent. And, um, you know, obviously, you got Harden, you got KD. You know, these are guys that are special as well. But the whole point, Adam, of that team was to have the big three. So everybody wants to see the big three. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I felt like I felt like you guys needed to bring Kyrie back. I don't. I just don't. I don't really like that whole part-time player thing. Like, I, I don't like it either. I don't, like, I don't it like it either. either. I don't think you should just let the guy. Uh, honestly, I think if you're gonna do that, he shouldn't just play. Because there's no point in having a part-time. That's never even really been a thing. The whole season been weird, but it's really just COVID. You know, COVID's messing sports up in general. But um. Like I said, I, I kind of saw this coming. I, I knew you guys were going to lean on to bringing Kyrie back. I just saw it. Because mm-hmm. now you see the level of play, the intensity. Look, without him, honestly, I think if he was playing tonight, you guys would have beat the Bucks. You guys would have beat the Bucks. I, I, I believe that. You know? But that this is going to screw you guys over in the playoffs because, what, let's say, like, the series, let's just say, like, God forbid, the series is what? You guys are down, like, 2 or 3 0, and then you guys got to travel. I don't think that's why, but then you guys got to travel, let's say, with a deficit like that. And then, look, you bring Kyrie in. And that's the thing about this part time thing. He doesn't even, even get to warm up or, you know, really get started. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I just feel like we saw the rush. He, he, he can't practice. He can't practice with the team, though. He can't practice with the we, team. We saw. We, we saw the rust. You know what I mean? It was bound to happen. You know, first game. But I just feel like this is going to be a common thing now. Because look, the guy's not playing every game, and you know he's a special talent. But you know, in order to break out of the rust. You gotta play more games, and he's just playing away games. You know, I just feel like it's gonna take time. And at that point, I feel like having him as a part-time player, yeah, maybe it could work. You know, it maybe could prove us wrong, but I just feel like you gotta have this guy full-time now. They got yeah. I I, I, I said before they they gotta get him full-time. Like um, gotta get him eventually. They got to get him full-time, you know, um, eventually. Especially come the playoff side. Like, if he's not full-time, but like I said before, if he's not full-time by the playoffs, we're going to have problems. There's mm-hmm. going to be problems. Michael, do you agree? Uh, all right. I, mean, I would love to say more about the Nets, Nets but because they're saying they just lost the Bucks, like and they said before they can't beat good teams. Like they have, they've had they've struggled at home and they're struggling being good teams. So they're really because I said before, I as of right now, I'm skeptical whether or not this team's gonna be good enough to um to like win a title if, if they don't get Kyrie back full time. If they don't get Kyrie back full time, then I'm skeptical whether or not they can win a title as as presently constructed. Cause they see, cause they, cause they prove it over and over again. A, they're struggling at home. They have, a, they have like a sub. That did you guys see this, guys? This is weird. Like when it comes to home field advantage and stuff like that, check, check this out. Check this out, guys. The Nets are fourteen and three on the road, and they're and at home. They're a five hundred team at home. They're a five hundred team at home this season, which is it's, which is really weird. But this is where not having Kyrie. Yeah, that. yeah, this is where not having Kyrie. Like, really, you know, you have Kyrie. The and, listen, man, I, I I read a stat with the other day. I forgot what it was, but I think it said when the big three plays, 
they're like sixteen and three. Exactly. Like overall record, like they don't. Like I said, just imagine if Kyrie's playing full time. You know, that that home record would be a lot better. Because look, it's hard to guard those three guys. We we well, obviously, it, if they're on the court really at the same time, guard. they're unguardable. If all three of them are playing, they're oh, near, yeah, they're fair. near. A, they're as close to unguardable as it gets. It's actually unfair. It's unfair. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. That's what I think. Yeah, definitely. So hopefully they could kind of really get back full time and for uh, for us Nets fans they can he can help, you know. And and hopefully hopefully like um ho- hopefully like um Hopefully he'll be back full time soon. Cause a he's so much fun to watch, and b he's a Jersey boy, and I would he grew up he grew up rooting for the Nets. So I really would love for him to you know, come back full time and help his help the team he grew up rooting for like win championship. So I'm so Kyrie if you're listening to this, I, I I'm I'm rooting for you. I hope you get back on the court full time I'm soon. So, but guys, you know what time it is. It's time for our bets of the episode. To recap last episode, guys, only one of us won our bet. Only one of us won our bet. You want to guess who it is? Hint, he's not on this episode. So it's none of us. It's none of us. That leaves only two possibilities. Chris. Chris Kieran won his bet. He had the Grizzlies over the Nets on my life. We hyped that game up because so many of us decided to take it. And Grizzlies beat the Nets on the my life. He and he and Chris with that one bet adds 21.5 points. We were saying, remember guys, what we were saying before about Chris struggling? That is a big, big bet for him to get going again in the right direction. But Everyone else lost. I had the Nets over the Grizzlies on the spread and the over that game. So obviously my singing probably was a complete disaster. Alex, you had the Grizzlies over the Nets. You won that one. You did one more win to complete your parlay. And what happened, my friend? Took the L. Yeah, the, the Grizzlies beat the Cavaliers. You had the Cavaliers over the Grizzlies on my line. So that wrecks your parlay, my friend. I am sorry. Sam had the Nets over the Grizzlies on the spread. Pisses of a Bucks on the my line and Elkis over the Suns on my line. So next versus Grizzlies wrecked his parlay. My son had the Nets over the Grizzlies on the mo- on the money line. Um, I so you took the L there. But Michael had the parlay of Duke over Georgia Tech. You won that bet. Yeah, Kansas over Oklahoma on the my line. You won that bet, Michael. Michael, you need one more win to complete your parlay. Yeah, Providence over Marquette and Marquette beat Providence. So that wrecked the probably Michael, my friend. I am sorry. Stupid, All right, but update stupid. by give you to give you up the understandings. To give you up the understandings. Michael, you remain our ring there. You remain first place. Nice. 30 and 33 record. 379.06 points. I am in second place. 28 and 35 record, 316.83 points. Alex remains in third place, 26 and 37 record, 306.38 points. Chris jumps back in the fourth place, 28 and 35 record, 285.31 points. Chris is back in third place, ladies and gentlemen. Fourth place, ladies and gentlemen. He was, he was starting to get sway for Chris after he slipped to the fifth place, but he's now back in fourth place, which Marcel said, I'm sorry, my friend, but you move back down the fifth place. 34 and 29 record, 264.98 points. And Sam is in last place, remains in last place, 38, 28 and 35 record, 225.90 points. All right, you guys want me to go first? Yep, babe. All right, guys. I've been thinking about this one, and it's the last week of um, the NFL season. So I wanted to make sure I wanted to make sure that um, I went out with a bang. 
I, so I honestly, it's the la- it's the last week of the like regular season. So I wanted to make sure to I wanted to do a football pick. And you know what? Like I think I think this one, guys. I I I I, I I'm not gonna lie, guys. I'm feel I'm feeling kind of good about this one. I'm feeling kind of good. You guys, do, are you guys ready to hear it? Yep, I'm ready, Chief. I am looking at the Bills and Jets game. You both are Jets fans, Michael and Marcellus. I'm looking. I am looking at. I am looking. You know, at this game. And where's the I'm, game at? It's at Buffalo, and the Bills are right now. The Bills are favored by sixteen and a half. Now, now I was thinking. The Bills are going to win this game. Uh, they're a far superior team to the Jets. But with a line of 16 and a half, both te- with a line of 60 and a half, both uh, the Bills, they've pushed a playoff spot. They're, so no matter what happens after this game, they're in. No matter what happens after this game, they're in. Yes, they would love, they love, they're good, they, they, they're going to play hard because they do want to win the division because the, because right now their Bills have pitched a tie. So they're going to play hard because they, Want to see if they can, you know, um, win win the division. So they they definitely are have something to play for. But with sixty half that large of a number, like like with that large number, they're going to be motivated. I don't think they're going to be motivated to necessarily like to run people in the in the ground. They're not going to be motivated to like run their team in the ground. And when you see how well the Jets have been playing lately, they've they beat they beat Jacksonville. Um, and they almost beat the Buccaneers. So. I think um, the Bills will win. But, guys, I'm going to take the New York Jets with the points. I'm going to take the New York Jets over the Buffalo Bills on the spread, plus 16 and a half. And I'm going to do a same game parlay with this. I'm going to go Zach Wilson over 186.5 passing yards. I think I think he, you know, um, I think he has a really, I think he has a really good game to, you know, close out the season. So you pick the Jets over the over the Bills on the spread on the spread. So, so the the line is sixteen and a half. I think the Jets will cover. Adam, yeah. I've been waiting ten years to pick the Jets. Adam, yeah, I'm a Jets fan. I'm telling you to not take that bet. Are I you appreciate sure you. I'm, I'm sure about this. I am sure about this. I am confident about this. All right. Alex, you're up next. All right, yeah. As of right now, we do not have Chris's or Sam's bets right now, so just letting you guys know. Alex, All right, go I'll make ahead. a bet for Sam. I'll make a bet for Sam. <laughs> okay. Okay, I am going to go head-to-head against Mike. <laughs> you don't even know what Mike's bet is yet. Or, or, or are you going to bait Mike on the going head-to-head? Yes. You're gonna try to bait him. Okay, go ahead. I am gonna go Eagles first half money nine. You an idiot. That's a stupid bet. Nope. So you're going Eagles first half money line with the parlay. My second bet is. LSU money line against Tennessee. College basketball. You an ignorant LSU fool. money line over who? Tennessee. Okay. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha your bet. All right, who wants to go next? Marcellus, you want to go next? I'm going to take this one easy, man. Just give me um, give me the Jazz money line over the Pacers. Oh, Jazz over Pacers money line? Yeah. I'm trying to get back. Michael taking a – Marcellus taking another easy bet. <laughs> He's smart. It runs in the family. We're smart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. That's actually a pretty good good bet because Jazz of a Pacers. You know, you could still you could still you know um get some good money on that. You could still get some good points. Yeah, I need that. 
Nigga he ain't no, he ain't no fool. Mama raised no fools, man. Nope. She did not. Okay. I'll go for Chris. I'll go for Sam. All right. Who else? You want me to go for Chris? Yeah, I'll go for Sam. I got the perfect bet for Sam. All right. Don't please be kind or don't try to sabotage him. He's in last place. Don't try to sabotage him. <laughs> I'm gonna help him get some wins. I need. Uh, I need my boy to get some. I'm gonna pick it easy. Go ahead. I'm gonna pick the Clippers over the Grizzlies. No, nah, the Gri- the Clippers over the Grizzlies. Money Oh, Adam. Yeah. Uh, Chris sent me his bet. Oh, uh, 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 after so after um after Michael's done, you can read it. After Michael's okay. done, you can read it. All right. Bucks over Hornets. Okay, Bucks over Hornets. And this game's gonna be a Magic versus Pistons. I'm gonna go with the Pistons over the Magic. Pistons over Magic. Gotcha. The two really shitty teams. So there you All go. All right. One of them got to win. Exactly. All right. And the Pistons have a better record than the Magic, so. I'm going All right, Chris, Chris's bet. Alex, you have Chris's bet? Yep. Um, it is um, Grizzlies money line against L.A. Oh! So, Chris is kind of going head-to-head with Sam. No, with Mike. No, no, because Michael picks for Sam, remember? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to take that bet. All right. Did he have anything else? Do you have anything else, or is that it? Uh, that's it. Okay. All right, Mr. Ringleader, Michael Cunningham, you're last. Go ahead. You know what? Let me get, let me get, let me get my elite Corso impersonation right. Hold up. You know, let me t- – now listen here, sweetheart. We've been doing this uh this get your game on thing for a while now, right, Adam? We're approaching the final right? stretch. We're approaching the final stretch. We've been doing this. We've been doing this, Adam. You know what I'm saying, sweetheart? Yeah. If all right, that smell that smelly smell. That's you smell it? You smell that smelly smell. The smelly yeah. smell smell. I'm gonna go with since I'm going to go with Duke over Miami tonight. Wow, Michael picking Duke. Shocker. That's my team. That's my car. Everybody knows me. Duke is my favorite basketball team. Everybody knows that. Okay, everyone knows that. Continue. I'm assuming that's not your only bet. No, I'm I'm going. I'm I'm so I'm so riding. I'm going to I'm going to go with um Hold up, um, Phoenix Suns. Well, last time I picked Phoenix, they fucked me over on Christmas. I'm gonna go with Phoenix over um, um over Heat money line. All right, Suns over Heat money line. Okay. And I'm All gonna right, do so a, one last bet. All right. Hold up. Some are you going head to head with anyone? Somebody called me out, Adam. Somebody called me out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some asshole called me out <laughs> saying, Mike, you, you got no balls or nothing. Last episode, I believe, right? Saying I have I no think it was balls. Chris. Yeah, it was Chris doing that. You no, know, and, 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 and Alex, and a certain person on this podcast right now said, I take safe bets. I have no balls. Uh, Mike has no balls. He's scared. He little girl. There's nothing to scared about me. And the last time, and Adam, you know me. When I get called out, and Marcellus, you know if I get called out, I back it up, and I and I'm um to somebody calling me out. And you know we play on Saturday, Adam. We played the name, and you know who I'm going with against it. I accept, and you know what, Alex. You know what I say to your challenge? You wanna know what my answer is? What? I accept, bitch. <laughs> Adam, what is this on my blanket? Read what it right here. Read what it said. Cowboys. What is this thing, boy? What is this thing, boy? 
Dallas What's Cowboys. That? That's who I'm going with. Because uh, Alex, I accept, bitch. Cowboys <laughs> money line. Wait, so Alex, you picked the first half money line, right? Yep. Oh, okay. So I'm going I, with I, the whole money line. All right, the whole game. We're going the whole game money line. Gotcha. Alex, if you have a set of balls, you go for the whole game. If you have a set. It's different between having a set and knowing how to use it. Alex, I, Alex, are you, are you going to accept or are you going to stick with first half? Alex, if you have a set of – there's a difference between having a set of balls and knowing how to use them. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking – Adam, I think he doesn't know how to use his balls. He may have one, but he doesn't know Adam. how to use it. Yeah. Adam, I am going to stick with my first one. Okay, uh, gotcha. Uh, <laughs> Oh, Alex has no balls, ladies and gentlemen. Alex, think Al, Alexander think Alex Benson just, Rich has no balls. I think Alex is just trying to move up the standings, Mike. No, he got no balls. It's okay. Adam, does, is Alex a chicken? I don't think he's chicken. And oh, I think he is. Mike, Mike, Mike I didn't know that you turned into a penguin. <laughs> I'm not no penguin. You a chicken <laughs> and a coward. Cause you know, if you have a set of balls, you would you would do it. Cause the old Alex I know, the Alex Rush I know, never turned out a challenge. What are you, John Berardi now? Okay, penguin. John he's Berardi. A, he's, he's taking um. He's taking you know, Eagles of the Cowboys in the first half. I think that's enough. No, he technically is. He's technically going head to head with you. He kind of no, is. No, no, he's ahead. actually being a little girl. But the old Alex I know would have went the whole risk against me. But hey, Adam, should I give Alex a bra for Christmas next year? Mm. If you want, come on, Alex. You know we go head to head for years. You have never backed down a full bet as long as I met you. Why are we not doing it now? Come on, Alex. You mm-hmm. called me out. I'm calling you back out, brother. Come on, Alex. I'm sticking Come with Come on, you. Alex. It's the last game of the year. Come on. Let's go out on the bang, baby. Come on. It's it's technically not the last game of the year. For for the for the NFL season. For our season. For the regular season. The regular season. We'll still be doing best for the postseason, though. Alex doesn't have a set of balls, Adam. It's okay. I guess he left his balls in his mama's purse. But um, <laughs> wait, is there a chance like the Eagles and um, Cowboys will play in the they postseason? They can't play. They won't play. The Eagles okay. are probably only way they'll play if they're in the NFC Championship, which is doubtly going to happen. Which it which is practically impossible. If that happens, me and Alex may be curses on the air. <laughs> <laughs> Did he will have to go head to head against me the whole game? Then if he then then I will criticize Alex. He doesn't go head to head. I will criticize both of you. Don't go head to head then. All right, this is our episode. Right, uh, yeah, episode. guys, that's all for our bets. That's all for this episode. I'm tired right now. Um, for on the behalf of the Get Your Game On podcast crew, uh, we are sorry for Alex Rich having no balls anymore. Back to you, Adam. <laughs> Back to you. <laughs> Alex hates me. It's okay, buddy. I still love you, even though you have no balls anymore. But guys, do you have any final thoughts? Fuck Eagles. Fuck. They're going to lose to victory. To the Cowboys. Set them high. Fight them low. And what if the Cowboys lose, Mike? Fuck you all, we them boy, cowboy nation. You're still the cowgirls. Watch your mouth, cowboy nation. You know what, me and me and this man is blanket right here. I'm gonna get laid. What we win? I'm gonna give. I'm- all right, I got in the show now. Here, that's it. This has been episode 64 of the Get Again podcast. Yours truly, Agrasani, Mayu Kariam. Actually, my sauce for like thank you heard. Leave a like and follow or subscribe to the podcast. Also, if you if you want to join the conversation, drop a comment, a review, and we may feature it in a future episode. My right, friends, those who are just fancy, if you can match your world, believe in it, and dive in. See you next time, and until then, stay lit. <laughs>
and we're out.